everyone. Thank you for joining us in the part two of the video. So I'm Christine Sumake and I am with Andy Ritter. So Andy, what do you want to cover for us today? So in the first section of this video series, we have taken a closer look at field programmable PWM controllers, the design tools and their basic architecture. Uh, so then we took a very simple configuration tool to put a voltage mode control in place. Um, now, in this section two, we are going to change the control mode of the controller from voltage mode control to peak current mode control. Before we get started, we have a closer look at the hardware we are using. So, he, but the board you see here, this is our CIP hybrid power starter kit. That board is, uh, incorporates a onboard debugger which can be found here on top. So this is the interface we use to program, configure, and monitor the device during runtime. Then here we have our field programmable PWM controller, PIC16F1779. And here at the bottom, this is our power supply. So it is a 25 watt synchronous buck converter. And for, uh, to allow you to experiment with different feedback signals and configuration options, we have added multiple different current feedback options. So the options we are going to use first in this example is a current sense transformer. So it's located above the high side switch of our half bridge. Um, and we have a additional current sense option called DCR sensing. So in this case, we are just using an RC network, which is put in parallel to our main inductor. And that is um, a very cost effective way uh, to sense the inductor current. However, it has some particular downsides we will cover in the next session. Current sensing option number three is an average current monitor device, which is uh, sensing the voltage across the shunt resistor here between the main inductor and the output capacity. And then it gives us just a feedback we can feed into yet another PWM controller. So this flexible setup allows you to experiment with different configurations, incorporating different peripherals. So the configuration we are putting in place now is a peak current mode controller using a current sense transformer uh, feedback signal. So when we look into the block diagram what changes now, then we will see that our current voltage mode implementation is now swapped out by a peak current mode modulator. So this modulator looks very different from the one we had before. We started out from a simple comparator and some glue logic giving us an SR ledge and a clock, and now we are incorporating the current feedback signal. In fixed frequency continuous conduction mode, uh, we need something that's called slope compensation. We will not cover this in detail in this section. The only thing we is important to know at this point is that um, to making the power supply stable under this operating conditions, we need to modulate a negative ramp onto the reference uh, given by the air amplifier. So this part is visible on the right side and we use a peripheral block which is called PRG for programmable RAM generator. So this particular um, peripheral is using an internal current source and capacitor to generate a negative ramp. That is then put on the reference output of our air amplifier and this modulated signal is then fed into the comparator which is comparing this signal with our current feedback signal. But only changing the modulator is not enough because what we actually do when we switch from voltage mode to current mode signal is we're transforming the system from a second order system into a first order system. As a result, our um, compensation network is simplified. So instead of the type three compensator we have used in the voltage mode controller, we are now using a type two compensator which has a less component around the air amplifier. So Tim, would you please guide us to the process of how to make these changes and make it work? Yeah, of course, I can easily show it to you using the SNPS power library in just few steps. 
In the previous configuration that we did in the demo one, it is very easy to change the control mode in the topology level. All you have to do is go to the SyncBot2 configuration and change the control mode to the PCMC. But what we'd like you to show you is to go down one step below on the control modes to give, to give us an access to the fault block, modulator block, and compensator block. We will going to swap the modulator block VMC to modulator block PCMC. So to do that, we are going to swap the VMC2 operation, remove it on the project resources, and upload the PCMC3. Upon uploading the PCMC3 on the configuration, change the PWM mode operation to half bridge as we have a synchronous block converter. And you can also change the high level parameters here, just like the sync block too. You also have an option to enable the soft start or the dimming engine. Click on the upload all for the CIP blocks and peripherals to be uploaded on the project resources. And then go to the pin manager Look for the PCMC3. Let us change the current sense pin to port D3, as this is what is mapped on the CIP hybrid starter kit. Change the output high, PWM output high to port D5, and the PWM output low to port D4. You could see on the pin manager package view how the pins are mapped. After that, click on the generate so that the MCC can generate the files for the peripherals and SMPS library. Build the program and, and program the CIP hybrid starter kit. Now that the power starter kit is already programmed, can you take a look at the result? Sure. So let's have a quick look what we have done. So we have swapped out the modulator block and the compensator block, which now became a type two instead of a type three compensator. So when you look at the compensator network on the right, um, then you will see that the air amplifier um, is inside the device while the RC network used to compensate the power supply is external. So by swapping out the compensator against the, from type three for voltage mode against type two for current mode, the internal components have not changed. So reference and air amplifier are still the same as in the previous one. The only change that is, has been made is that we have removed one RC uh, element from the external circuit. So the measurement we are performing looks is still the same. The only things that have changed in the plant is now that our compensation network has been simplified by removing one of the RC elements and we got a new feedback signal which is coming down from directly from the inductor feeding the inductor current feedback signal into our uh, new modulator incorporating the RAM generator for slope compensation. The measurement is performed in exactly the same way. So what we are going to see now on the measurement should give us a first order system. So on the starter kit, we have moved the measurement points from the upper test points to the lower test points. So now as we are using a different uh, PWM controller block <coughs> for the peak current mode implementation, we have different test pins to access uh, the injection resistor of our control loop measurement. When we are now running the measurement, um, here you see the previous results from the first session showing the voltage mode, typically type two uh, system. So steady uh, falling minus 20 dB per decade. Then we have our resonant frequency bump 
And then afterwards, we also see the minus 20 dB slope here at the crossover point, giving us a stability of roughly 70 degrees phase margin, minus 17 dB of gain margin, and a total crossover frequency of approximately 17 kilohertz. So now as the, the part is reconfigured for peak current mode control, we expect that this frequency domain is changing. And as we see, we have just transformed by switching from voltage mode control to peak current mode control, we have transformed a second order system into a first order system. So now we see a typical frequency response of a peak current mode controller. When we now relocate the cursors to measure the bandwidth, then we find that the bandwidth has increased from 17 kilohertz to 34 kilohertz. The phase margin, however, has dropped to something like 50 degrees of phase margin, which is still very sufficient, might depend on the application. Uh, so the, tune, the tuning that needs to be performed to match application requirements would have to be done by reworking the external RC network. So that is a quite nice peak curve mode control mm -hmm. and looking at the performance at 500 kilohertz, 35 kilohertz crossover frequency is quite sufficient. So what we have seen is that by having access to the modulator blocks you have a very flexible access point which allows you to directly manipulate and switch out different control modes even if these options might also be available on the higher block but you get more transparency and more flexibility in the lower level 2 block. Mm -hmm. So um, nevertheless it was a pre-configured um, peak current mode controller. So Tim, what if I'd like to use a less standard current sensing technique to mm. utilize additional components of our analog circuits on board of the PIC16, F1779 to incorporate additional feedback conditioning issues? Well, Andy, the SMPS library still supports the, that configuration. And we can cover that in part three.